Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Dean Hintz from Safe Software, and I'd uh, just like to welcome you to the FME Inspire webinar, uh, Luxembourg edition. And uh, we have online with us uh, Jeff Conan, Don Murray, and uh, Ken Bragg's also uh, uh, manning the, the, the chat room, I guess you could say. So, uh, yeah, feel free, just like to everybody to say hi. So, Jeff, uh, you can say hi to the gang. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Okay. This is Don. Okay. Awesome. So uh, yeah, appreciate your time. Thank you for uh, dialing in, and we'll just get started here. Got quite a bit to cover. Um, I'm just going to give a quick overview of some of the uh, ETL concepts as applied to Inspire harmonization principles and uh, and then a quick um, rundown on the Conterra Inspire Solution Pack for FME and then I'll hand it over to Jeff who's going to go through uh, a solution uh, applied to Luxembourg's GeoPortal and then we'll wrap up with with uh, a few words about Inspire Trends and uh, consuming Inspire also using FME. Okay, as opposed to being consumed by Inspire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's always the. <laughs> yeah, we've so certainly the, at Safe. We certainly at Safe. We spent an awful lot of time working on uh, on Inspire stuff and and figuring out ways to help people so, um, you know meet their Inspire goals. Yeah. So Inspire, in terms of the goals, that's what we're what the mandate is for the Common Data Model and Open Standards uh, uh, to support uh, data interoperability and sharing data. So that's kind of the the ideal. The reality sometimes can be a bit challenging because uh, our internal data models don't always map very closely or very easily to the Inspire one. Um, so yep. yeah. hopefully uh, uh, your source data model isn't quite that chaotic. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Regardless, it's, it's, it's going, there are a few um, hoops to jump through to try to get uh, the data yeah. mapped. Yeah, and and everybody's of course everybody has a different mess or 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 everybody's source data was different and so of course with Inspire as well if everybody maps to the same model, then it's much easier for everybody to to share data from from one area to, um, to the next. Okay. So before we really dive in, I would like I would like to hear from everybody. The first poll question is: What what Inspire um, efforts are you working on the most at the moment? Oh. Uh, so have you have you started Inspire? Uh, are you working on uh, metadata? Um, yeah, I just launched that, Dean. Perfect. Okay. So we'll give so, that a minute to go. Okay. So. And I think so far, with this one, the votes are coming in. Yep. I think you can maybe vote for more than one, but uh, yeah. Yep, you can. You can. So metadata is um, is way in the lead there. View services WMS is is second, and um, so we'll let this go another five seconds here, and that will let it go a little longer. People are now really starting to uh, to uh, to uh, submit their. Yeah, notices. last year we had a question like this, but there was a, a huge amount in other. So now we try to redesign yeah. it. <laughs> That's right. So there's now there's twenty percent in other and ten percent in none. So, okay, if you so if gonna... you did if you did check other, uh, maybe you could put a comment in uh, as to what that is that you're working on. Because I'm yeah I'd maybe and none interested too. In... Yeah, yeah. Unless it yeah. So okay. So I'm going to close the poll here, Dean. Okay. Great. Thank okay. you. Okay. And now I'll share the results with folks so they can see. Uh, yeah. And metadata is. Um, is a big one, and of course, um, for folks out there who don't know, we did do a metadata webinar, and um, we can make that link available, or you can find it if you go to uh, Safe Software in previously recorded webinars. You'll see uh, you'll you'll see it there as well. So anyway, I'm going to hide the results now, Dean. And okay, great, thanks, pass Don. It back to. So in terms of what we do, most of you are probably familiar with with FME, but uh, what we do is exactly kind of like that previous slide you have the source data and the destination are quite different and so we support uh, building bridges to help uh, transform and translate data from one environment to another one format or data model to another so 
we believe uh, FME is an ideal tool to support Inspire. That's and right, of course, right. you can see in terms of the range of formats we support, everything from traditional CAD and, and GIS to uh, 3D formats, uh, of course, XML-based formats, yep. and even yep. web sources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't really matter what kind of um, Inspire data you're you need you need to support with uh, with our tools. You can move the data into that that uh, data type uh, XML schema, and you can also get it out and then move it back into your own system in whatever whatever way you wanna you wanna use it. So yeah. So just to kind of understand uh, you as an audience a little better, we have a quick poll on how long you've been using FME. Okay, there you go. And um, and they're coming in now. Okay. Okay. Ten percent have not used. Okay. Well, this this audience, I would say, this audience more um, are more FME users. Generally, on the, our webinars, we're getting about twenty percent of the people who have not used FME. And um, and uh, here we go. So I'm going to close this poll in five seconds. Four, three, two. One, there we go. I will close it and I'll share the results. And you can see that, uh, you know, I have not used FME surged in the last uh, five seconds. So uh, maybe I should have kept my mouth shut on that one, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let's quickly change the subject. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll hide the results. Great, thanks, Don. So just a, a few words on, on core concepts uh, um, about data harmonization for Inspire and how FME supports that. Um, so we have these core concepts of common data model and uh, open standards, and there's also a, a, another key concept really is schema mapping. We believe that's one right. of the core challenges, uh, and I'll get into that in a minute. Okay. So a lot of you have probably heard about ETL, Extract, Transform, and Load. I, I kind of break that down in a bit more detail um, when, when applying this to Inspire uh, because there's a few, well, yeah, Inspire, Inspire has, a, has a few extra hurdles uh, to get through and, and it kind of helps to break it down. Um, this isn't really um, uh, all about technology but more about just understanding your data and with Inspire, uh, given the wide range of, of uh, data sets required and now with Annex 2 and Annex 3 a lot of different data types, raster data, getting into 3D data for buildings in, in Annex 3, uh, it's a pretty big challenge to, to even know what data you have out there so right. uh, certainly before you go away and run away and start designing stuff you need to actually understand what the source data sets are like and then what the destination schema yeah, requires. Yeah, yeah, there's really no substitute for understanding the model. Um, certainly we make it easy, but uh, but you have to know how to map into the, the destination model is what you're saying. Yeah, and I mean, we really recommend opening up data in a tool like FME Viewer or Data Inspector to before you actually try to design a, 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 a transformation script or workspace so that you actually understand what you're, what you're working with. Do we actually help people, Dean? We well, yeah, for sure. In support, uh, support. Yeah, yeah. if you've got data that you can't read, let's say you've got XML and you don't know how to read it, uh, we can yeah, certainly yeah. give you a quick. Uh, you, you can send us a, a sample, and, and we can say here's how to read it, or we can give you a small work, sample workspace that yeah, shows how yeah. to extract something. So that's a good point. Yeah, and we have some we have some samples as well that show how things that like you've built a few. That yeah, uh, there's a lot on on yeah. FMEpedia. Yeah, perfect. In terms of data assembly, this is probably the the step people are most familiar with FME uh, for extracting all your uh, raster, CAD, database data, and assembling it. The key here uh, at the bottom is building a data structure that corresponds with the Inspire requirements. So typically, in Inspire, um, you know, even for something as basic as geographic names, you may have to read three or four different tables and do a bunch of joins in order to have a record that supplies what you need for geographic names or administrative units. Right. And of course, uh, the format support, as we mentioned, uh, is critical to giving, giving you, letting you get started in that process.
Yeah, and with, Insp with Inspire, of course, the key one there is uh, XML or GML. Yeah, on the reading side. Yeah. Yeah. So I won't spend too much time, uh, and you're welcome to to download. You'll get a copy of the slides after, where if we have to flip through these a bit quick. But uh, just to mention a few examples, I thought that the Lithuania project was a good example of all the different formats. Not all of them, but uh, a yeah. range of formats that they support, as well as uh, coordinate systems. Yeah. And it's also a pretty good example of an integration between FME, FME Server, and Contera's SDI suite, as well as ArcGIS Server. When it was, the first phase was built, it was actually before Arc for Inspire, but it is using Arc, ArcGIS Server. Okay. The next main uh, phase in, in the uh, uh, Harmonization process is the schema or is transformation in general, and a big part of that schema transformation. Yeah. And what do we mean by schema? Well, that's when we're talking about uh, changing the actual data structure, whether that's the geometry or the uh, feature type names, attribute names, um, uh, code lists, things like that. And this is what it looks like in FME for some basic uh, schema yep. mapping, things like. Uh, mapping to different feature types or changing attribute names. And there's a geographic names example at the bottom right there, which shows uh, you know, change, reading from a UN Gazetteer data set and mapping that to name geographic name. So fairly straightforward uh, visual interface for doing mappings like that. This is a little more involved, like a code list, where you've got a code that you want to map to a descriptive value, or you just have uh, one code list in a source to map in a destination. This is also pretty common, that you can see in the bottom example, where we are reading uh, maybe a different color or style code uh, from a CAD file and mapping that to a category in a GIS table. And then we have the schema mapper transformer, which is quite a bit more powerful. Um, some people, I think we've improved the interface a lot to make it easier to use. And so you can do everything from attribute name mapping. Again, this is applied to geographic names. Uh, or you can even have a conditional mapping. So if the country name is Italy, create a field called geographic name language and set it to Italian. Right, right. And, and the nice thing about the schema mapper, of course, is that uh, much of it can be done in an Excel spreadsheet. So you can give this to somebody who doesn't even have to know FME, just has the, the source fields and the destination fields, and they can go away and simply build an Excel spreadsheet. So in that sense, it's, uh, it's very nice from that standpoint as well. Yeah, and from a perspective of Inspire, you could have a template where you had all the destination field names and even a comment saying what it's for, yeah, and then you yeah. could have a, a, a team of domain experts, they may never even see FME, that just fills in what the source field names are. And there was a project uh, pilot that we did with uh, uh, Swedish protected sites, um, yep. Swedish EPA and Matri of Sweden that combine data from three very different data models, the protected areas, uh, Helsinki Data Commission, and uh, Nature 2000. Mm -hmm. And so we had a different uh, schema mapping workspace to load a staging database, and then we just had the uh, Inspire services based on the staging database. And so that's a sample. Uh, yep. Uh, I guess that's a, from Oracle, or a shapefile extract from Oracle. And then there's the output uh, inspire schema with all the combined data mm -hmm. and the schema mapping table. Okay. So uh, just to keep things moving, um, of course we support a wide range of geometry transformations and even going from non-spatial to spatial, you may have uh, something that needs to be geocoded, whether it's an address or coordinates. Uh, extracting geometry can be uh, important in a Inspire context and also generalization. You may have very precise data. You don't need that level of um, precision in your uh, to to meet your Inspire requirements, and so you can improve your performance a lot. Let's say for WFS download service, if you can generalize and reduce the number of uh, points. 
And then for validation, uh, there's there's a wide range of areas where we support validation, whether that's uh, validating against the Inspire schemas or mm -hmm. uh, the data integrity, things like unique IDs or geometry. Uh, new in 2013, we're get, even getting into 3D geometry validation. Right, uh, right. And then you can customize all sorts of validity rules with testers, test filters, range testers, uh, range filters, so you can check um, the quality of the data as you're assembling it. And right. uh, so there's no point really in submitting bad data, and if you can filter that uh, while you're um, tra transforming uh, data into Inspire, you can filter out bad data, that so much the better. Yep, great. And here's a quick example from the Swedish Transportation Administration where uh, validation is used to, as, as part of an upload service to FME server to load the, the data. Okay, so people from remote sites uh, simply upload the data, uh, it's validation's done on their server, and then the person who validated, who uh, submitted the validation gets a report back telling them what's good, bad, and... Yeah, exactly. So they're really, it, it's all automated so that there are you don't have somebody emailing uh, the poor GIS analyst to try to, and then he has to go through and filter out bad, try to fix right. bad data. They just go yeah. to a, a, a server upload yeah. point, and uh, yeah, the, the QA is done automatically. Oh, excellent. And finally, publication. Uh, really, when we're in in the Inspire context, we're talking about generating Inspire compliant GML. And that's what and, that validation uh, of XML was was playing into, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that, of course, FME can generate the GML directly. Um, a lot of the requirements talk about the OGC, WX uh, services like the WFS, WMS services. And so um, FME server has a, a basic WFS service, but uh, most often people are integrating with uh, something like Arc servers, which we'll see today with Arc just for Inspire. Mm -hmm. Or let's say some of the open, open source tools like Degree or GeoServer. Yep. And in conjunction with, um, I'll mention spatial data services. Uh, we, FME Server supports building uh, what's called Invoke services on top of OGC services. So you can have an FME Server which consumes WFS and then generate something like PDF or KML. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that last example, um, PDF generation, is uh, I did a talk last week in a, at the Inspire conference uh, with, with Matri on that. And so it, it's actually a workspace that consumes three different WFS sources and produces a PDF output. Yeah, and PDF, of course, is very convenient. Um, everybody knows how to read PDF. Uh, even, e even my mom, and she doesn't even know if she knows how to read it. It's also very nice within the browser. There's plugins there, so it's a really, uh, you know, low friction way of uh, of sharing some data. Yeah, one one uh, impression I got both from the conference uh, and 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 uh, in the past working with Inspire projects is that I think Inspire will really only be successful when most of the users don't know they're using it. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, exactly. You know, right now, you kind of have to be a semi-Inspire expert, and there's only a couple of tools in the yeah. world that we know of that will actually consume Inspire WFS with the rich schema. Yeah. Um, so not everybody on their handheld is going to be accessing Inspire that way in five years' yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. kind of looking forward. So just a quick summary before we go to a, a poll question. Um, FME has a wide range of tools to support Inspire. We went through uh, data evaluation, assembly, transformation, uh, validation, and uh, publication. And we have tools that support uh, Inspire each of those steps. And uh, so basically, and, and key, key, I think some of the key concepts are, are where you're going to find most of the work in the, related to Inspire will be the schema mapping, yep. and uh, of course, and assembling the data as part of that schema mapping process, you've got to actually bring all the data together, 
And uh, for those who are new to XML and GML, that might take a bit of work. And, and so we yeah. certainly have yeah. done a lot of work lately to improve FME to yeah. support and, you in those areas. And for any serious schema mapping, you're you're almost always going to use a schema mapper. Is that is that fair to say, Dean? Um, I think you know different FME users have a different preference, and so you can certainly uh, have uh, a wide. You can okay. have a fairly complex workspace with a lot of attribute uh, copiers. But yeah. schema mapper does allow you to centralize and. Uh, the rules for schema mapping in one place, so it's certainly worth taking a look at if you have a big, big problem, big project like that. Okay. So uh, why don't we do a quick poll question? I've been talking for a while. Okay, here we go. Specifically related to Inspire, in what areas have you been using FME? Okay, so I'm going to launch that poll, and um, we have data loading, data transformation, and schema mapping, reading and writing GML, FME services, and um, FME server and web services and none of the above so the the votes are, are coming and while, while oh, that oh, uh, yeah go ahead while that poll is going so I just noticed that one of the last questions asked was about schema mapping if that could be done on the fly so could you have let's say WFS in like we have a workspace that read WFS did a schema mapping and published WFS and in theory yeah you could do that you can you could yeah. certainly do that on the fly uh, you'd have yeah. to look at performance considerations. Uh, you yeah, know, yeah. are you just doing this on a few features or trying to do it on a huge data set? So that might be an issue. But uh, with FME, there's no, there's no problem with setting up a a service that could do schema mapping. Okay, so I'm going to close this poll now and uh, share the results. And you're going to see that. Uh, Schema mapping is the, the biggest thing using for FME, so that's good. Data loading, reading and writing, and 13% uh, using FME server, and 43% uh, are using FME for other things. And so that would be interesting to, to um, if you could specify, uh, you know, let us know what those are. That would be, that would be great. Yeah, that would be very good, helpful if you could. Yeah, so just a, yeah. a quick. Um, Example here uh, for I think this workspace is a good example that shows each of those three steps um, for for the whole data harmonization process. We have uh, data assembly, so this is that UN Gazetteer data set that's available free from uh, UN servers. It's a world data set. I filter that, so that's the data assembly side. And then what I do is I filter that just for a few countries of interest in Europe. And uh, we have to kind of assemble the data together. Um, so I use a point on area overlay. There might be joiners involved in that process. And then I have a few attribute copier and value mapper transformers. Or you can put all that you can do all that functionality within one schema mapper. Mm -hmm. So that's the schema mapping process. And uh, then there's a GML generation process. So there first I have to generate some feature IDs and then push that through a, an XML. Templator, right? And uh, yeah, so that's and they have an XML validator there at the end there too. Yeah, yeah. And I can just pop up the workspace here. Don't have too too, too much time to go through it all in any in much more detail than that. Other than I can show that the XML Templator, uh, you can see the actual templates. So yeah. when I'm generating the GML. Uh, I just need a sample uh, document and a sample record, and then we mm -hmm. insert the, the various uh, values. I guess yeah. the yeah, we insert things like uh, the IDs and uh, the different values yeah. from the FME yeah, attributes the into the template. Yeah. yeah, yeah, looks good. So that that example is available on FMEpedia under geographic names and. Uh, Again, this is not really meant, you know, you'll, we'll see about, we'll hear about the Inspire solution next. Uh, this isn't meant to replace that whole process. It's more of a, just a demo to show how FME can be used at each of those stages. And so this is the, uh, you can see that's the input, and then in terms of the, the schema mapper output, you can see that we are mapping the language name 
Uh, yeah, looks good, Dean. Yeah, there's the language name Italian. So that's Perfect. that was one of the rules in the schema mapper. Yeah. Good. Okay, and okay. just to wrap up, a couple of a few quick points just about the. Um, Just a sec here. So there's a number of other ins Inspire examples we don't, I don't have time to get into. And uh, of mm -hmm. course, in terms of our partners that are working with Inspire, uh, we'll talk more about Kantera in a minute. Uh, but as you saw, we have examples from Matria in Sweden, HNIT Lithuania, that was the Lithuania Geoportal example, AED SciCAD, uh, mm -hmm. also from Germany, and Spatial World from Finland, and there are others. Uh, we have yeah, and the Technical the University well. of Munich, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So just a few quick words about the Inspire Solution Pack, and then I'll turn it over to uh, Jeff. Uh, so really the Inspire Solution Pack handles all the in terms of those steps of the data harmonization process, it handles the uh, data assembly and uh, transformation part to load the geodatabase for ArcGIS for Inspire. So ArcGIS for Inspire handles the web services side, and uh, the FME Inspire Solution Pack basically loads that database. Yep. And the nice thing about it is you get a whole set of predefined uh, work workbench templates that jumpstart that data migration harmonization process. And so you really don't have to be an expert in Inspire or an expert in, in uh, XML or the Inspire schemas in order right. to um, satisfy your Inspire requirements. Right, so to be clear, I, um, I'm building a staging database from my, my existing work um, data models into this, and then from that I can meet all the Inspire requirements. Ah. That, just like that yeah. picture says. Exactly. So, so what you get with ArcGIS for Inspire is everything on the right side of the screen from the database onwards. So, yeah. you get a system that will meet uh, all the Inspire requirements, but you have to get the data in there. And, yeah. um, you know, I guess in an ideal world, if you had a geodatabase, everything in geodatabase in a schema very similar to Inspire, maybe you could do that on your own somehow. But mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in the real world, often you have a very mixed or uh, you have a whole ecosystem of data sources that you have to assemble. So the Inspire yep. Solution Pack makes that a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Good. And uh, really, it also helps you automate each of these uh, steps except for the schema mapping. The schema mapping is always going to be the most work intensive part of the yeah. problem because you it, it requires there's no one product that will meet all your inspire requirements out of the box because everybody's source state is different yeah and so you get a template with all the destination in it but you have to drop in your source data and, and do that mapping map. yeah 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 good and this is what a typical workspace will look like and uh, hopefully Jeff will, will be able to show us a little bit more maybe from his example uh, but the, the nice thing about this is that you get all sorts of predefined um, uh, attribute creation tools with context sensitive help. So if you don't actually know what that attribute means, the help will tell you, okay, this is the kind of data you're, we're looking for. These are, the, these are the type of values that would be valid. And so, yeah, whether or not they're avoidable, so all of the different flags and things that have to be set for each particular um, attributes show up. So this is a bit of a different approach because I know, Don, you mentioned the schema mapping approach before. This is a bit different the way the approach taken by Contera and the Solution Pack. And there are always trade-offs, but this approach, the nice thing is, is you do get the context-sensitive help and you get a rich GUI that helps you uh, make the right decision for each field. So yeah, void values, um, agreed, not agreed, void reasons, etc. And that's just for the, the void value. There's a lot of other 
uh, values there that where you have a limited range of choices that the solution pack guides you through. So without further to do, um, I would like to hand it over to Jeff now. And unless uh, there were any burning questions from the audience, I don't know, Ken, if you noticed anything. Maybe we'll just have a quick pause before handing it over to Jeff. No, it looks like we're ready to hand it over to Jeff. Dean, there was one question uh, you guys may want to address. Does the Inspire schema, is the Inspire schema only available in the Inspire solution pack? Outside this, do we need to create our own? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's meant by Inspire schema. The, there is an, uh, there, there's two things that could mean. One is the Inspire schemas themselves, literally, from the XSDs. Anybody can read that with, with FME, for example. You yeah, can read yeah. and you can also that. generate samples with, from the XSDs with FME and then yeah. use those as your basis, as, uh, as the basis for your template generation. So. But they might also be talking about the Inspire schema for the geodatabase. Now, that's that's right. a product from Esri that they said, in theory, is openly available. They have a relational interpretation of Inspire, which is defined in the geodatabase data structure. And in theory, you should be able to get that from Esri. But, uh, you know, I haven't... I looked for it once. I couldn't find any place where you could just go and download it. Yeah. Um, so you could, in theory you know, maybe you could load that yourself somehow, but uh, it would be a lot of work without the solution pack. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I guess we need to make Jeff presenter. Yeah, yeah. certainly if you're not an Esri user, um, you know, we, you're still able to use our technology to to meet Inspire, uh, your Inspire requirements. Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the project that we did with, yeah. with Matri was with, an with example. Matri, they, they, yeah, exactly. They used uh, PostGIS, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. so if you're not an Inspire user, in, uh, sorry, if you're not an Esri user, uh, we said, yeah, we don't want you to go away with the impression that, no, FME doesn't have anything to support you. If, if, certainly yeah. you can. That's right. Um, there might be a little bit more design work involved with, let's say, setting up the database and and yep. of course, then you ha then you'd have to set up the, the web services on top of it. Yep, yep. And, and one thing we should mention too: Dean had that list of of partners that we've worked with, and and they're of course, um, you know, ready to help you with your to meet your Inspire needs as well. So we're happy to do that. Okay. Okay, Jeff, uh, I've made you presenter. So. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how we in Luxembourg uh, implemented the Inspire View services and the latest Inspire uh, download services using uh, FME and uh, ArcGIS for Inspire. Uh, another way to, to put it would be um, uh, thanks to FME, the Red Lion is juggling with Inspire. Uh, that's the, the the way we put it uh, to uh, make a bit of a management summary. Um, who who uh, am I or who, who am I working for? It's uh, called Administration du Cadastre et de la Topographie, ACT. Um, we're an administration in Luxembourg depending on the Ministry of Finance. Uh, we're about uh, 130 people responsible for a lot of cadastral stuff and boundaries and delimitation of properties and s such things and one of our responsibilities is the management and the hosting of the National Geo Portal. So we are uh, managing the National SDI of Luxembourg and that's where I, I work and um, here on, on the next slide you can see uh, the website of, of our administration, uh, where people can uh, get all sort of information uh, about the administration, but also here on uh, the GeoPortal, where they can have a look at the GeoData or order GeoData. Um, the GeoPortal itself is the central SDI for the country, so for the Luxembourg state, for all the stakeholders uh, that are public. Um, we have some tools for visualizing geodata, 
uh, some view is a general map view, a thematic view is for, for, for themes like water or tourism or agriculture. We have got a mobile view or some applications like routing or uh, coordinate conversions. And we've got a shop where people can actually buy geodata. This is uh, a view on, on, on our uh, main web page, geoportal.lu, where you can, uh, where, where customers can actually access all our applications and our data. The map viewer looks like this. Um, so it's uh, quite uh, handy, it's very used, uh, we, we got about 2,000 people a day using it. Uh, you have to put that into relation that uh, actually Luxembourg is 500,000 uh, inhabitants and we have 2,000 of them using our geoportal every day, so that's quite a, a success. I won't go into any live demos of the GeoPortal. If you want to uh, try it out, you can go onto mapgeoportal.lu and, and try it out. So today I'm going to show more uh, the Inspire part. Uh, this GeoPortal exists in different with different sources like water or tourism. Where so we are. Uh, getting together a whole lot of different data from the different stakeholders in our geoportal for our SDI. Now that's not Inspire yet, but we have a lot of data uh, that come come together uh, in our geoportal that can then be uh, mapped to uh, Inspire themes uh, later on. It's about 130 different, different layers. It's quite fast because everything is styled and pre-calculated, it's easy to use, and it's based on, on open source technology. I, I'm come, I'll come back to that later. We are, are using um, quite a lot of open source technology and uh, everywhere uh, where we can use open source technology, we do. There are only two uh, uh, big um, points where we don't use uh, open source technology and that would be FME and ArcGIS for Inspire. I'm coming back to, to that later on and I explain why we are using these uh, commercial software packs rather than open source uh, packages. Just one word about me, I'm, I'm project leader here at the administration uh, responsible for the technical parts of the GeoPortal. I've been a, a long time FME user and professional you've been uh, FME trainer um, so you can contact me under this email address if you have any questions. Now uh, let's come to the main part, uh, Inspire. Um, the ACT and especially our crew, the, the GeoPortal crew, have been designated uh, by the government uh, for being the, the Inspire point of contact for, for the country. So we are responsible for uh, all that uh, Inspire uh, related uh, software and, and services uh, are uh, available. We have to manage the metadata uh, and network services for the, the Luxembourgish node of Inspire. So since May 2010, we are reporting and monitoring about network services since November 2011. Our discovery and view services are available online on inspire.geoportal.lu slash geoportal. And uh, since uh, a week, the uh, first set of uh, download services is available as part of the IOC, the, the initial operation capacity of uh, this year's deadlines for Inspire. We have got one uh, entry point for all the Inspire uh, related services and data sets on our um, infrastructure. That's the Inspire portal where people can actually search for data or services using the metadata and then they can uh, integrate the view services or download services directly from there or they can directly view it online uh, using a, a sample uh, flex viewer. 
which is only a sample. It's not supposed to be uh, a, a real uh, WebGIS or a, re a real live viewer. It's only a sample. So, how does our team uh, manage Inspire? We're actually only five people. There's one general manager, one project leader, two de developers, and one IT manager, which means there's not a lot of resources for Inspire. We uh, have to manage the entire GeoPortal and the SDI, all the data that is behind. Um, so when we uh, had to cope with Inspire, we, we were looking for a solution that would take most of the word work, the technical work, out of our hands and um, just care uh, about the technical stuff so that we could focus on, on the data. Um, so we've been looking into uh, different solutions, uh, mostly open source in the beginning. We, we had been using um, Geo Network or, or testing uh, Geo Server and, and Map Server and Degree and all that stuff. But um, at that time, uh, so a, one year ago, uh, implementing a solution with this kind of technology would have meant that a lot of development and configuration resources would have been necessary to uh, define the services and the data models. So then came uh, ArcGIS for Inspire, which actually uh, takes care of the entire service part and the data model. So the only thing that uh, we had to do was put data into their data model and that was kind of um, interesting for us. What exactly comes with ArcGIS for Inspire? The most interesting part for us uh, was the data model. So you probably know the data specifications of Inspire which are very uh, hard to understand and very uh, big. Uh, so if you want to implement the data model or the services on your own it, it would cost months uh, to, to implement it and then Isri or Esri uh, comes with a, a relational data model um, where you can put your data into and then uh, it serves uh, conformant or uh, compliant uh, WFS and WMS services out from that data model. That's very handy and as already mentioned by Dean it's actually free. You can uh, download it uh, for free on, on the uh, ESRI website. Um, then uh, another part of ArcGIS for Inspire is the Inspire Geo Portal, which is actually which, which is actually the, the web page uh, that allows you to search for meta metadata or harvest metadata from there, or even enter your metadata, um, which is actually also based on uh, user right Geo Portal, which is uh, open source too. So these two uh, first parts are actually free parts and then come the two other parts which are um, uh, which are not free which are commercial uh, parts it's the Inspire add-on for ArcGIS desktop or I should pr probably say ArcGIS for desktop now uh, where you can create maps for Inspire based for Inspire based on their data model so actually you say I want I now want to create a uh, view service for the theme administrative units. It's going to uh, define um, an MXD file uh, containing all the layers that are uh, mandatory for a service um, that is compliant with um, Inspire. So it will create the different layers with the exact naming, the exact uh, style sheets, uh, so that it is uh, Inspire compliant. And then there is an add-on for ArcGIS Server where you can actually serve these uh, MXDs that you just created with ArcGIS Inspire add-on for ArcGIS Desktop. You can serve these as Inspire View services or download services just with one click, just by activating them. So the only part you have to care about is putting your data into uh, that data model. Uh, here's just a, an example of um, our data uh, for administrative units in their um, structure. 
and on the second um, screenshot you can see uh, actually the, the relational data model uh, of of the geodatabase. It's it's several hundred uh, of tables, so it's not very easy, but it's uh, a lot easier to understand this relational data model uh, than uh, to understand the GML specification. So it, you don't have to. Um, worry about nesting attributes or whatever, you just put your data into these tables and the rest is going to be done by the software. So ArcGIS for Inspire does a lot of things for you, but there's one thing it doesn't do. It doesn't convert your data into the Inspire data model. That's something uh, no software package can do for you. You have to do it on your own. Dean already mentioned that, uh, and that's where we need FME. FME is the tool used to convert, convert data from the production databases into the Inspire data model. We have been using the Conterra ISP, Inspire Solution Pack, uh, that helps to understand the technical aspects because there is very good documentation of the different uh, attributes and mappings. Um, that have to be done and it, it streamlines your efforts. You don't have to uh, look for uh, lookup tables and documentation all the time. The transformers are, are there and you just have to choose from one of the values. Uh, you don't have to read the documentation uh, all the time. So it, it brings the mapping a bit closer to, to uh, the non-Inspire experts. And the semantical mapping of the data has to be done by thematic experts. No solution will do it for you. So we did this last year for our Annex 1 and 2 uh, themes. And I think I spent three months full time on, on that mapping. And it was not so many uh, data layers available. We don't uh, cover it all or with, uh, without data. So it's quite a lot of, of work. Using uh, the Inspire Solution Pack from Conterra and FME, we have uh, created a set of scripts um, that can be executed regularly to fill the Inspire data model. Actually, what we do is that there is some Python scripting going on, uh, firing off the, uh, a, a row of um, workspaces to uh, first fill a personal geodatabase or a file geodatabase rather and um, once it's finished it loads the entire data set into ArcSDE where uh, it is then served uh, through the um, network services. The, the loading takes about 24 hours. It's, it's not that much data, but it's quite complicated to remap the data, and there's a lot of relationships between the different themes. You can imagine that um, the first thing to, to create are administrative units, because afterwards when you uh, do the semantical transformation of addresses, you have to reference the Inspire IDs of uh, the administrative units these uh, addresses are in, and uh, so uh, you'll have to uh, make lookup tables to get the, the correct IDs that have been generated in the first step, and all that kind of relations that get very complicated uh, make that it takes quite a time to run. So we execute that uh, script once a year or every three months, uh, depends a bit on, on if there have been big changes in, in, in the source data. So we did this for uh, the Annex 1 themes, all of them but PS, so uh, administ administrative units, addresses, cadastral parcels, geographical names, transport networks and hydrography. And for Annex 2, we uh, serve uh, data for uh, auto imagery, elevation, land cover, and uh, geology uh, as standard WMS as Arc for, ArcGIS for Inspire does not support Annex 2 yet. And since uh, last week, we uh, do also serve administrative units, hydrography, and uh, geographical names as download services. Here we can see an example of uh, the mapping that is going on uh, for the team addresses. I'll perhaps uh, just zoom in a little bit um, 
go into live mode here for uh, the team uh, geographical names. Yeah, now you should see it. So what's going on is that on the on the left we have got some um, post GIS layers uh, that are red, and then there's some renaming going on. We have got some testers, then attribute mappers to make uh, some correspondence with the the, the different uh, types. And we have got some uh, ISP transformers here, where you, where the solution pack actually gives you a choice of um, of values to put into a given attribute, and then data comes together to, into one stream to get a common ID. Which is. Uh, here, the Inspire IFC ID transformer gives a common ID to, or gives an Inspire ID to all, all our data. And finally, it goes into geodatabase tables. So I don't, I, I only have to care about the mapping. I don't have to care about XML, and that's uh, quite, quite uh, nice. Um, so I'll go back to my slides. Which are the lessons learned um, here by using FME and Inspire? I think FME is the right tool to transform your data. Uh, from, I think it's almost the only tool uh, that that allows you to do uh, this kind of transformation if you don't want to program a, every bit of your transformation. Uh, I don't know any other tool that could do it. ISP uh, helps you to streamline your efforts and be more efficient just uh, by uh, helping you to get the, the value lists and all uh, of that ready. The complicated part is not FME, it's not ISP either, it's really the semantic mapping. You have to plan a lot of time for this part where you have to discuss with partners which attributes go where, how to map the values, and that's really consuming a lot of time and a lot of effort, and that's really what's important. So that's what, what we wanted to care about, and we did, didn't want to care about technical issues. Right. Which are the next steps? Well, we'll activate some more download services for Annex 1 and 2 until the end of the year. Actually, that's only one click in ArcGIS for Inspire, activate the download service, but it's a lot of uh, questions to clarify regarding pricing and legal aspects and that kind of stuff. And then starting next year, we are going to do the mappings for Annexes 2 and 3. We'll have to wait for the data models to be final before we begin. We don't want to do that mapping twice. And once the mapping is done, we are going to activate the view and download services, uh, which will be one click only once the data is in the database. And we permanently have to keep up with new data, sure. Um, I have some other slides about FME use in our administration, which is not Inspire related, but I don't know if we have a lot of time left, Dean. What do you mean? Yeah, I think probably not. So, yeah, I think uh, if you don't mind, I'll I'll take back the, the presentation. I'll just show one more slide about sure. open source. Uh, so I'll just uh, pass these general FME slides. Uh, if uh, someone uh, wants to see them, I can send the slides. Um, yeah, we'll make this, if that's okay with you, we'll make this available as part of the yeah. overall presentation uh, later on. Yeah. So people can go through those. J just per perhaps two words. We are using FME and FME server um, in our uh, general infrastructure to to 
extract data in the shop and to automate jobs for all sorts of uh, jobs. So there are a bit, I think there are, in the slides there are 10 or 12 examples of what we are doing with FME and FME server. But what I really wanted to stress here is uh, again the, the, the open source uh, credo that we are actually um, promoting. Normally in our geoportal we, we try to use a maximum of, of uh, open source components like PostGIS, Map Server and Mapfish and mm -hmm. we do only use uh, commercial software is if there's no good alternative or if the commercial software is so good that you don't have to uh, look for something else. And mm -hmm. there are only two exceptions. It's ArcGIS because of the complex symbologies they can do uh, compared to Map Server or, or, or or other uh, open source uh, web servers. Um, we use ArcGIS uh, for Inspire. I explained it a lot uh, in the previous slides. Then we use FME because it's the only tool which allows you to really manipulate your data. And for me, there's no alternative. So that's right. uh, about uh, what I wanted to say today. Okay, great. Uh, on the topic of PostGIS, I should mention that um, we are busy working on support for PostGIS 2.0, which is will be part of FME 2013. So if anybody's okay. wanting to put rasters in PostGIS or generally moving up to PostGIS 2.0, then they should watch for that in the beta coming soon. Guys, do okay. we have time for a, a question for, for Jeff? There was a, one question from the audience I thought might be worth asking. Sure, yeah. Yeah, just the question was, Jeff, have you met some real inconsistencies between your data sources and Inspire model when mapping, mapping your data? Yeah, certainly a lot. Uh, the semantical differences are, are quite big. Um, the data models of Inspire are very complicated. Uh, you have to imagine that they are a compromise of 27 countries discussing about data specifications. So everything is possible. You can put about anything in it and it's very um, normalized. So uh, in, in, in relational databases you, uh, you uh, talk about third normal form or uh, I think this is the, the, the seventh or eighth. It's uh, totally crazy how, how this, uh, did they uh, define for example the team addresses. It's, it's, it's extremely complicated and for us addresses uh, it's two tables. It's uh, You have a, t a table with lines where you have got uh, street names and you have got table with points where you have got house numbers and then uh, you have to put that into I think 15 different uh, feature types in, in in Inspire data model. So it, there are a lot of in, it, it's a, a lot of decisions to take when you do the ma mapping, and it's quite hard to understand what they want and then how to put your data in. To some extent, you probably have to put some placeholders in for fields that you know, and then document yeah. what what the decisions you've made, and then you may be able to refine that later. So yeah, there's not. It's probably going to be an iterative process. And, and the easiest way is always to put nothing and say it is uh, it's void. Yeah, yeah. Most most of the time you you are allowed to do it, and, and for, when you don't know what to put there, you don't put anything. And I think there are a lot of countries doing that. So. Uh, okay. Well, we're we are running out of time. So, Jeff, thank you very much for that real in-depth dive into. Uh, uh, a real-world application of uh, ArcGIS for Inspire, supported by the Inspire Solution Pack from from Contera, and uh, that certainly also helps us to see, you know, some of those details of of how how it actually gets applied. And uh, yeah, it, you know, like you said, the semantic mapping can't be done for you. So this, but the tools really help you. I, you mentioned this to me earlier, is that you had a limited amount of time and so you really needed to focus your time on the areas that you have to do and then the technical areas are supported by the tool set. And that's the path I have on the screen to the uh, the data model, the free data model from ESRI. So I, I'm, we're pretty much out of time here, I've got about one or two minutes left. Um, this is something that we talked about, that was talked about at the Inspire conference last week was sort of this shift from uh, the supply side to the demand side and, and being more responsive to users. 
And that kind of comes back to a point I made earlier about um, the real success for Inspire will be when people uh, don't know they're actually using it. And I just wanted to give one example from from Jeff's uh, WFS download service. He hasn't actually seen this <laughs> yet because we tried this yesterday and uh, I had to do a small adjustment. So these are the data layers for hydrography. And I'll just let this run in the background uh, while we're talking. And the other thing I'll note, show what we're doing here is because of the complexity of the data model, there's a lot of nested structures. And this flatten option allows you to flatten the list structure, uh, for example, the name. So the point here really is that a majority of the end users probably won't be won't have a, uh, a complex VFS reading tool at their disposal. And so we have to think moving forward, how can we build uh, web services that uh, allow the average um, spatial data consumer to get at the data. And uh, so here, if I just click on one link, what I can, what you can see here is that we flatten the data structure. And so I actually have, instead of having the curly bracket data structure that you get with the list structure in FME, we we have the um, the actual name of the location. Hang on a sec here. There. So that the name of that stream is Gershit. Or Bach, I can't quite pronounce it. And so you can see this is actually a flattened interpretation of that list structure. So FME has built this concatenated uh, feature type name. And this just goes to show that FME can be used to consume Inspire data. And this is coming live right from the Luxembourg uh, Inspire download service. So I think we are pretty much out of time. And so the, the, the my last few slides were basically okay. We've got all this inspired data. How do we how do we consume it? And FME supports both the XML, GML, WFS reading as well as of course the reconciling the nested structure with the relational. And so basically, we maybe we can do the quickly do that poll question: yep. Which areas would you like to see FME support for Inspire enhanced? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and something else that I that, that that struck me about Jeff's presentation was the um, as you're um, answering the poll here was that um, he didn't have to uh, you know um, hire a, an army of people to make this happen. In fact, I'm, I doubt he had the budget to do that. So he mentioned that there was um, five people um, for Luxembourg that. Uh, you know that are part of the the, the GIS part, business and um, and that they were responsible in addition to everything else they're doing is also meeting the inspire the inspire requirement. I think you mentioned he worked on the mapping for about three months and um, so so that's you know again what the tools are bringing you is is you yes you have to worry about that semantic mapping but once you've done that then you're getting all these other things that uh, that come along for the ride. Yeah, and the other big point there, uh, I guess, Don, is that once the data changes, once you've made the mapping once, you don't have to redo it. So that's like a yeah, one-off effort. That's right. That's um, right. And then he can run it whenever he wants, and yeah, and uh, it takes a day basically in his case. So, okay, so we'll give a couple more seconds for the poll here, and um, so five, four, three, two, one. Okay, close the poll and share the results. And interesting. Um, so it's, it's inter yeah. interesting to so, see that uh, yeah. people still yeah. want support, more support for complex uh, GML reading and writing. Yep. And uh, of course, the as you were talking about, Don, the schema mapping. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There may yeah. be more tools we can offer there. Yep. Yep. Make the schema mapper easier to use, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is just and, my quick review slide. Uh, the tools that we s offer, which support Inspire. Uh, the data assembly format translation, schema mapping, data validation, and then ultimately publication to GML, uh, uh, WFS, and of course consuming uh, GML and WFS. Yeah. Uh, and then of course uh, enterprise services, upload services, download services. It didn't get into data upload, but quite a few implementations use FME server for data upload. <laughs> 
And uh, when we get to things like Annex 3, uh, will be more important our complex uh, uh, GML support for things like full 3D. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so if anybody has City GML, I'm, you know, definitely they want to check out FME for reading and writing that. So just a quick summary, our, our FME provides a full range of tools for Inspire and our partners provide, uh, assemble those into complete solutions. There was one question I noticed about is the ISP, are those just workspaces? Well, the Inspire Solution Pack is actually a, a third party extension of FME, so that's a, an extra cost uh, extension. And so it gives you a whole range of transformers that you otherwise wouldn't get with a standard FME and those are Inspire specific transformers. Yeah. So that's pretty much all we have time time for. Other than the, uh, if you're interested in this free seat of online training, and I don't know if there are any other uh, questions, but I do did want to just extend a thank you to um, Jeff, Jeff Conan, uh, for yeah. for that excellent overview of of the uh, Inspire implementation at Luxembourg for Luxembourg. Yeah, thanks very much, Jeff. That's great. And I think it's very uh, appropriate that it's, uh, you know, you've got some web services there that we just went live last week. So this is all <laughs> very real time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so and thanks to, uh, to, to Dean as well for, for putting that, to, for putting all this together. And uh, for Ken, who's uh, standing by and answering questions. And of course, to Roger, who keeps us all uh, on track and making sure all this uh Happen. So I'm going to close this poll here and share the results. And there you go. We're a very polite group here. <laughs> okay. And it's back to you, Dean and Jeff. Okay. Um, so, yeah, just to make note, there are more. Um, I think there's a, a webinar by One Spatial coming up in a, in a, in a couple weeks' time. So just pay, uh, just watch uh, on safe.com. You can you, you can find out more info about both Inspire and our upcoming webinars. So yeah. thank you to everybody for attending. Uh, thank yeah. you for all your questions, and we'll get back to you for those that we didn't answer now. We'll we'll answer later, and we will circulate uh, the 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 PowerPoint presentation and uh, perhaps links to some of the demos. Yeah, so and thank you, for Dean. Thanks for all the for your effort and all this. This is great. And thank thanks, Don, for <laughs> great tool to support Inspire. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the whole I love XML campaign. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, you ask yeah, XML anything. Uh, yes, you can send it to Don. And, and yeah. absolutely, XML <laughs> at safe dot com. That's my email address. Oh, perfect. You're serious? Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, it goes right yeah. to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. Th have a great day, and uh, I'm sure we'll we'll hear, see, or hear you guys online soon. Ciao. Great. Thanks. Bye.